Hello and welcome to HITC Sport. Alright, let's take a look at every Premier League club and each respective side's best player that they've just released. And I'll try and find out what their best moment at the club was, just to, just to give you something to feel a bit nostalgic about. Although I'm struggling with Martin Craney, I really am. Arsenal, Denny Wilbeck. I mean, technically, Aaron Ramsey has also been released, but I'm not going to include him because the man isn't exactly getting tossed out on the goddamn scrap heap and being forced to hand out job applications down his local pizza hut. Ashley Williams, that is your future. Instead, I'm going to go for Danny Wilbeck. Finally shown the door after breaking down more times than an X Factor contestant. The man is still only 28. Anyway, what was his best moment? Probably scoring the winner at Old Trafford in March 2015, effectively shoving two fingers up at Louis Van Hal for effectively ruining his life. Aston Villa, Alan Hutton. It feels like Alan. Hutton has been at Aston Villa since the dawn of time. They signed him in 2011 and if you told Villa fans then that they wouldn't be getting rid of him for another seven years, they'd probably have jumped off a bridge. He's had his ups and downs at Villa Park but he did have a resurgence and last season scored a goal that Leo Messi would have been proud of in a 4-2 win over Birmingham City. Anyway, they've also released the likes of Glenn Whelan, Mila Jedinak, Alberto Doma and Michael Richards. Yes, that man was still there. What has he been doing for the last three years? Sitting in his room playing Fortnite? Bournemouth, Mark Pugh. No, not Mark Pugh! Anyone but Mark Pugh! To be fair, I, I shouldn't slag him too much. Yes, he might not be Premier League quality anymore, but that is what being a 32-year-old winger does to you. But he signed for Bournemouth back in June 2010, when they were just a newly promoted League One club. So, fair play to you. Anyway, best moment, all right. In October 2014, he scored the first hat-trick of his career in a 8-0 win over Birmingham City. 8-0. Not Shrewsbury Town, not Oldham, not even against a bunch of lads swilling pints down the local pub. Birmingham City. Three years after they beat Arsenal in the Carling Cup final. Losing 8-0 at home. Like, what? Does someone want to explain that one to me, please? Brighton Bruno. No, not the movie where I was forced to endure Borat Schlong being swung on my face like a goddamn helicopter. Why did I bring my mother to that movie? No, instead it's that bald right back who's retiring after seven years at the club. His best moment, uh, being named in the 16-17 championship team of the season for the second year running as the Seagulls earn promotion. Burnley Stephen Ward. Burnley have had a bit of a clear out this week. Actually, not so much of a clear out, more of a goddamn extermination. 13 players have been shown the door to more, including the likes of Johnny Walters, who's retired, Anders Lindegaard, who's just shit, and one Peter Crouch. I'm sorry, but I could never take that signing seriously. You're stuck in a relegation battle, and your solution is to sign a nine foot ladder from Stoke. The man was nearly 40 years old, for Christ's sake. I'll go for Ward, because, you know, let's not forget he's played at two European championships, and he'll probably end up at Chamac Rovers on a free transfer. His best moment? <sighs> Playing 28 times for the Clarets as they finish 7th, I guess. Chelsea, Gary Cale. A few have been let go this week. Like youngsters Todd Kane and Martel Taylor Crossdale. As well as Rob Green, a man practically old enough to be their f***ing dad. And whose very existence at Chelsea looked weird as f***. But former captain Gary Cahill is also on the release list. Yes, the man may be 33 years old and no longer is able to defend to save his life. But 290 appearances, two league titles, two FA Cups, a League Cup, two Europa Leagues and a Champions League. That's a CV that would nearly rival John Terry's. The man has proved an outstanding signing for Bolton. Crystal Palace, Bakary Sacco. At Crystal Palace, they've finally kicked out the likes of Jason Punchin and Julian Speroni. A man who I've always said just looks like he sleeps at the and training ground. Also a special mention to Papa Suare though, who's being let go after, you know, never really recovering from that car crash three years ago. And no, I'm not referring to Alan Pardew's last six months. We've already been here with Palace and Sacco last year, only for them to re-sign him in January. That's, um, that's probably not gonna happen this time. His best moment was probably scoring one and setting up the other in a 2-1 win at Stamford Bridge in August 2015, which was Jose Mourinho's second ever league defeat at the stadium. Just the 11 years after signing his first contract at the club. That was such a weird stat. Everton Phil Jagielka. Who thought would Phil Jagielka swap Sheffield United for Everton back in January 2007? That he'd end up spending 12 years at Goodison Park, making nearly 400 appearances and end up playing 40 times for his country. I mean, there's been too many highlights to count for this man. A winning penalty against Man United in the FA Cup semi-final. A last minute thunderbolt at Anfield. Even recently, the head of winner against Arsenal. I mean, build that man a goddamn statue. And not so much uh, Ashley Williams, uh, build him a f catapult. Just to make sure he never sets foot in Liverpool ever f***ing again. Christ above that man should be locked up for crimes against offending. And of course an attempted murder charge for trying to kick a ball off Robin Van Percy's head. <laughs> Leicester City, Danny Simpson. When Leicester snapped up Danny Simpson in 2014, there was controversy. I mean, after his first season, the man was found guilty of assaulting his girlfriend and was sentenced to 300 hours of community service. The fans! 
weren't happy. No, the following season he wasn't spending time showering with his arse against the wall. Instead he was lifting the goddamn Premier League trophy. Playing 30 games at right back. I mean, the year after he was playing Champions League football. Lifting that trophy undoubtedly is the greatest moment in a Leicester shirt. By the way, also a special mention is Shinji Okazaki, an alleged goal scorer who managed to last at the club for that long. Despite how he scored 14 goals in 114 games. So that's just the... 100 games where he didn't score. He was playing up front for the Champions of England and scored 5 in 36 and still managed to win the league. What? Liverpool, Daniel Sturridge. So Liverpool fans will be happy to know that both Alberto Moreno and Adam Bogdan have been chucked in the biggest f***ing dustbin out the back of Stanley Park. But it's a sad day because Irish defender Conor Matterson has also been released. The kid who was named on the bench for a Champions League game against Man City last season, who prompted RTE to treat him as if he was the second coming of Christ itself. Now it's all about Queen Kelleher, the media darling and inspiration for couch potatoes everywhere. After lifting the Champions League for doing pretty much f all. I mean, this just shows where we are as a nation. 15 years ago, we were interviewing Roy Keane and Damien Duff after after playing in Champions League games, now we're demanding airtime with the work experienced kids who managed to spend 90 minutes sitting beside Adam f***ing Lallana and praying to shite that they weren't asked to f***ing come on. Anyway, Daniel Sturridge has also been released. Let's be real, the writing was on the wall when he couldn't give us Hal Robson Canoe and the West Brom team. Back in 2014 though, when he was scoring 20 plus goals a season, netting at World Cups, did anyone think that within five years this is how it would all end? He'd end up a broken dishwasher of a man chucked on the goddamn scrap heap? I mean his best moment was probably scoring the only goal against Man United on his 24th birthday to keep Liverpool top of the league in September 2013. Man City, Vincent Company. I mean, what can we say about Vincent Company? 11 years, 360 appearances and four league titles. Considering the man has started his City career playing in the midfield too with Stephen Ireland, the fellow who uses fictional debts of his relatives to pull a sickie, he's come a long way. Anyway, he's off to Anderlecht now as player manager with multiple highlights from the Manchester era. I'll go for that winning Thunderbolt strike against Leicester City, but don't forget about that winning goal against Man United in April 2012 either. I mean, without either of those goals, City wouldn't have won the league. Man United and their Herrera. Man United have already taken a dagger to their squad, chucking out club captain Antonio Valencia, a man who I never saw spending 10 years at Old Trafford when he was drafted in from f***ing Wigan, as well as James Wilson, a man who scored two in his debut before developing the first touch of a drowned mouse. But fan favourite Ander Herrera is also off, probably to warm the benches of PSG, and his best moment, a winning goal against Spurs in the 2018 FA Cup semi-final. Newcastle, Modiame. Modiame's time at Newcastle was a mixed bag. On some days, the man could look like a strong athletic midfield boss and others he looked like he had the motivation of, of a dead donkey he's been told to leave the club but his best moment was undoubtedly the flukiest equalizing goal against championship title rivals brighton in february 2017. the ball just flew in off his heel don't even act like you meant that norwich city stephen naismith so who won't be coming with norwich to the premier league the likes of yannick wilchut Ivo pinto matt jarvis and stephen naismith who just seemed destined to see out his final years up in scotland 8.5 million pounds he cost. What a waste. But his highlight was probably his first game. You know, he did score in his debut against Liverpool back in January 2016. They still lost by four. Sheffield United Martin Craney. So Chris Wilder thinks he can survive in the Premier League without good old Martin Craney, does he? I mean, good logic to be fair. Considering that man has amassed nine Premier League appearances, spending 16 years at three separate clubs. His best moment? Southampton Stephen Davis. All right, let's go with Stephen Davis, who'd already agreed to join Rangers on a permanent deal. A fine player in his day, he's made over 200 appearances for the Saints, with his own best moment, no doubt, being their first Premier League game back in the top flight in August 2012, when they traveled to the home of the champions. Manchester City, Davis is subbed onto the pitch and scores within three minutes to put the newly promoted side 2-1 up. I mean, they still lost 3-2 anyway, but still, the man doesn't score a lot of goals, all right? Tottenham, Fernando Llorente. Okay, this one is confusing. Earth to Fernando Llorente. Do you still have a job? Because this man's name was chucked on the release list at Spurs. Without so much as a thank you. Next to the likes of Thomas Glover and Connor f***ing Ogilvy. And where is the respect for a lad who dutifully sat on his arse for two years, no doubt praying to Christ that Harry Kane pulls a f***ing hammy. If he has left, or like, release a statement. But no, nothing. Leading to a speculation that maybe the man still has three weeks left on his contract and won't actually be getting sacked off. Especially considering he's... 
pretty much the only other striker at the club. But no, as it stands, I currently have no idea if Fernando Llorente is employed, or if he's now gonna just join the rest of us and set up a fucking YouTube channel. But hey, I think we know the man's best moment. That bar defining goal at the Etihad that went in off his left arse cheek, that ended up sending Spurs through to the Champions League semi-finals. Watford, Herrero Gomez. Okay, so Herrero Gomez is 95% retiring, but either way, the man won't be at Watford next season, which is quite sad, considering his last game, where he was lucky not to concede more than six in a f Cup final. His best moment, uh, probably the semi-final win over Wolves. Although, to be honest, considering what happened at Wembley three weeks later, he probably wishes he hadn't even bothered. West Ham, Andy Carroll. Remember when Andy Carroll was held up as the next Alan Shearer, only to be sold for 35 million pounds. Back when 35 million was actually decent money, as opposed to just chump change you chuck a Danny drink water. Well, at the age of 30, he's ended up on a release list. Yeah, he scored a few goals at West Ham, including a hat-trick against Arsenal, which is his best moment, but injuries destroyed his career. And now, once the most coveted striker in English football, he's now free to sign for anyone on planet Earth. Wolves, Carlos Heredia. Wolves haven't really let anybody go of note. I mean, I'll go for 20-year-old D Dominican Republic winger, Carlos Heredia. At best moment, Anyway, that's the end of the video, lads. Uh, let me know what you think. Twitter and Instagram are there. Are you happy with the players that you've released? Let me know in the comment section below. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, I'll talk to you in a while.